days And I've had some hills to climb I've had some weary days And some lonely nights But when I They outweigh my bad day, and I, I, I won't complain. Sometimes the clouds hang low. I can hardly see. that we have deserved but the grace of God is just so good hallelujah yes, some of us should have been swallowed up hallelujah some of us should have been killed a long time ago I know it sounds crazy but that's the truth of the matter so we got to give him praise every chance that we get hallelujah hallelujah 
to the angel of this house. Yeah. Come on, give him praise. Yeah. Yeah. Bishop Dr. Clark, come on, keep your hands together. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To all the ministers and and uh, saints of God, to the great apostle Perry. Yeah. We love you. We love you. Thank you for being here. Come on. Come on. Come on. To all the visiting churches, we love you. We thank you. We praise you. Thank you. To the elder of the house. First Lady, Deacon, Hallelujah, Evangelist in the house, Hallelujah, God has been good, He's been better than good, Hallelujah, I don't play this thing, Hallelujah, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, the theme on tonight is out with the old and in with the new. Come on, stand to your feet. Oh, hallelujah. I got a word. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Chapter 5, verse 17 and 18. I'm going to read 17 and 18 because it brings everything together. Amen. Tell your neighbor, you got to keep on reading. Amen. You got to keep on watching. You might miss something. Second Corinthians 5 and 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. And all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given us the ministry of a reconciliation. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Bless the word in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 You can take your seat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Nisi. Ooh, Jehovah Shalom. God. Our God. Jesus. Your God. Hallelujah. He makes all things new. Hallelujah. He is the God of newness. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. He's the God of newness. Yeah. Hallelujah. He's not in anything old. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. Yes, Lord. Amen. Paul puts it like this. I forget those things which are behind me and I move forward. I press forward towards the mark, towards the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Amen. Uh -huh. God is not in anything old. He's always doing something new. Yeah. Something fresh. Hallelujah, Jesus. He's the God of newness. Hallelujah, Jesus. The God of newness. Yes, he is. But he just doesn't make one thing new when he's, when he's doing his thing. Hallelujah. God makes all things new. All things new. When God is ready to do a shift, Hallelujah. When God is ready to do something miraculous, he makes all things new. Hallelujah, Jesus. He doesn't do, just do a small shift. That's why it takes a little while. He doesn't just make a small shift. Hallelujah. But I learned way back in college, he makes paradigm shifts. Hallelujah, Jesus. Many think they know what a paradigm shift is, but they really don't. Hallelujah. A paradigm shift deals with the thinking of the people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, you got to talk back to me. It talks, he, he, he deals with the thinking of the people. What's the use of bringing you to something, to the promised land, if your thought process hasn't changed? What's the use of bringing you to your glory place, to the place that God has destined you for, if the thought process is still the same? God makes all things new. And before you get to the thought process, to the paradigm shift, that is completed, that's when he makes his, that's when he does his work. That's when you can see the glory of God. That's when you can see the promises of God fulfilled. That's when you can walk into your destiny. Hallelujah. Yeah. The thinking has got to change. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. He doesn't just make you, what he just, he just doesn't uh, give you a nice suit to wear, a three-piece suit to wear. He doesn't just give you good looks. He doesn't just work on the outward appearance, but he works on the inside. Yeah. He's got to deal with all the things that are not 
lining up with God. He has to deal with all the things that are contrary to the word of God. And mainly, it's the thinking. That's what a paradigm shift is. He's got to change the thinking of his people before they can march on into the promised land. Hallelujah. And Paul, Paul was an amazing man of God. The greatest apostle. Hallelujah. He built the church. Hallelujah. God threw Paul. God made Paul new. Hallelujah, Jesus. So Paul was a walking embodiment of what God was doing. Hallelujah. God was new in his life. There was a fresh anointing on his life. Hallelujah, Jesus. There was something different about Paul. Hallelujah. He didn't come with enticing words, but he made it plain. Hallelujah, Jesus. He had to, he had to set some things in order. Hallelujah, Jesus. And in this scripture, he wrote letters to the church of Corinth. Hallelujah. How oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, follow me. I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there. We're going to have church. But I got to get there. He wrote letters to the, to, the, uh, to the churches. Why? Because he realized certain things. Hallelujah. That's why you got to know who's the anointed one in the hour. You got to know who's the chosen one in the hour. Because you can miss God. Hallelujah, Jesus. You can miss the shift. You can miss what God is doing. But you got to follow the anointed one as he follows Christ. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, my God. Paul. Come on, somebody. Paul. He knew what was going on. He had to correct some things in the church. Hallelujah, Jesus. And God made it all new when he sent his son. Hallelujah. And, the, and back then, you know, they had tabernacles. They had temples where they would come together. And the temple and the tabernacle would symbolize that God is present in the tabernacle. But not in us. Hallelujah, Jesus. Because of sin. Hallelujah, Jesus. That was the old form of church. Some people are still having church that way in temples and tabernacles. In the Old Testament, hallelujah, Jesus. God made everything new. Hallelujah, Jesus. They would have church in the tabernacle. They would bring lamb. They would bring lambs. They would bring oxen. They would bring uh, uh, all the goat. They would bring all the, the uh, animals that were considered pure. Why? Because they needed the blood to shed so that we could be in the presence of God. Hallelujah, Jesus. He, we needed to be in the presence of God. We needed atonement for our sins. We needed forgiveness for our sins. But us as individuals, we couldn't come to God. We had too much sin. Hallelujah, Jesus. It sounds like today. Hallelujah, Jesus. We had too much sin. We couldn't enter into the holies of holy. Hallelujah. We couldn't worship God as uh, we needed to, to, uh, to get in the presence of God, to see God's glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But here comes Jesus. Hallelujah. Here comes the Holy Lamb of God. Hallelujah, Jesus. The only Holy One that would reconcile us back to Christ. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. That was the eternal atonement. Thank you, Jesus. Now, Paul, he chooses Paul. Come on, somebody. He chooses Paul. Lord, have mercy. To spread the good news, the truth to the people. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hey, it's no longer the Old Testament. It's no longer the old way. We can't forget about it, but it's the New Testament. God is doing a new thing. You got to get with it. God is doing a new thing. Hallelujah, Jesus. And let me explain to you. God is doing a new thing, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if you get Jesus on the inside, hallelujah, Jesus, there's no more having to go to the temple. There's no more having to go to a tabernacle. But you can get Jesus for yourself, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can get Jesus for yourself. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, God. This is a good word. You can get Jesus for yourself. Hallelujah. You were the symbol in the church. Hallelujah. You listen to the word. Hallelujah, Jesus. You will seek God for yourself. He who believed in him could have everlasting life. Yes. Be baptized in Jesus' name with the fire, with yes. the Son and the Holy Ghost. Yes. And then the Holy Ghost shall come upon you. Hallelujah, yes. Jesus. Yes. That's the good news. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes. We can assemble and have a, a great time. Have church yes. like never before, like we're doing today, like we're doing now. But Paul had to come back and spread these letters. Hallelujah, Jesus. 
Because there's some things that were out of order. That's right. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, yeah. He realized, like in the Old Testament, people became uh, uh, comfortable. Hallelujah. People became, uh, people became, uh, they, they formed bad habits. Hallelujah. That's the bad thing about uh, a tradition and church. Yeah. We can get so comfortable, hallelujah. Yes, on, we can get so lackadaisical. On, we can get so uh, sidetracked. We, 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 we feel God's glory every day, every Sunday. That we, we feel that's all there is. We feel that, that, whoo, hallelujah, Jesus. We can, we can get, we can feel and, and experience God's glory and his Holy Ghost. And we, we just forget that there's other things that have to be done. Yes, right. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm going to make it plain. Mm. I'm going to make it plain. We form bad habits. There are things that go on in the church that should not have that go on in the church. Yeah. Hallelujah, Jesus. And Paul would have to come back and correct these things. Yeah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. My God. Yes, Lord. Right. My yes, Lord. Right. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yeah. He would have to correct these things. Hallelujah. Why would he have to correct these things? Because people would become so complacent in an everyday church. An everyday church. But like I said before, God is here for a paradigm shift. Not a small shift. And what does that mean, minister? What does that mean, minister? That means everything has got to change. Hallelujah. Everything has got to change. We are no longer just experiencing church. That's not what God came for. God came for to do kingdom work. Hallelujah. God came to do ministry. Hallelujah. And that's what Paul had to come back and tell the people. It's no longer just church. Yes, it feels good to get the Holy Ghost. Yes, it feels good to clap your hands and hear the good music and hear some good singing. Yes, it feels good, but there's something that has to happen on the inside. There's something that has to happen on the inside. There's something that has to go on on the outside. You got to be built up so you can get to the outside and, 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 and save these souls. Hallelujah. So when they see you, they see Christ. Hallelujah. They don't see Christ when you're doing the same thing that everyone else is doing. They don't see Christ when you're shouting in here and then you get out on the outside and you're doing exactly what the trend is, the next trend is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No, 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 no. God did not come for just church. God did not just come for tabernacle and temple. But he sent his son so we can have a deeper understanding. Hallelujah. He sent his son so we can have him dwell on the inside. Hallelujah. I'm going to get there. Don't worry. I'm going to get there. Amen. Tell your neighbor, we're going to get there. Hallelujah. So a paradigm shift. Hallelujah. He had to deal with the mentality of the people. We're not just having church. Hallelujah. That's the thinking. Most people just get complacent in church. Oh, I can do what I want. God loves me. No. Amen. No. no. That is not right. Hallelujah. That is not right. Hallelujah, Jesus. We have to be transformed. Uh, we have to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. We can't just shout and dance, but the mindset has got to change. We have got to get to a point where it's about ministry and kingdom work. Hallelujah. Yeah. And that's what Paul was teaching to the Corinth church. Hallelujah. That's right. yeah. I'm going to get there. Hallelujah, Jesus. That's what he had to deal with. He had to teach the people, no, you're doing it the wrong way. Your mindset is wrong. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, it's a new day. Yes, we're not under the uh, letter of the law. Because the letter of the law killeth. But, uh, uh, but, but the spirit gives life. Hallelujah, Jesus. I didn't come to condemn the world, but I come that you may have life and life more abundantly. Hallelujah, Jesus. But there's something that's got to change. There's something that's got to change. Something on the inside has got to change. Something in the mentality has got to change. We've got to go from church to ministry. We've got to go to church from church to kingdom mentality. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We're going to get there. Hallelujah. There's a few signs.
that God wanted the people to know through Paul. How can what, what how do you know that the spirit dwells in a man? Because everybody calling themselves a believer is not a believer. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. But you have to understand that persecution in hard times is a sign that God is with you. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Persecution in hard times, God, <laughs> no one's exempt from persecution in hard times. But God's people have, have to be persecuted and, and go through hard times to get the glory of God. Hallelujah. You cannot get the anointing of God. You cannot get the, the, the glory of God without hard times, hallelujah. Without trial and tribulation. Without going through fire, hallelujah. Some people don't want, some people want the glory. Some people want the anointing, but don't want the hard times. Some people want the, the, the hard times and the uh, and don't want don't want the hard times and the don't want the fire but want the uh, anointing and the glory of God on their life. Yeah. Hallelujah. Don't work Hallelujah. Sure. But the Bible simply tells us we are troubled on every side. Yeah. Yet not distressed. Hallelujah. Yeah. We are perplexed but not despair. Yeah. We are persecuted. Hallelujah. But not forsaken. Hallelujah. Yeah. We are cast down but not destroyed, hallelujah. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also in Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Hallelujah, Jesus. We can't have Jesus dwelling in us. We can't have the anointing of God without the fire. We can't have the God all dwelling in us and the, and the anointed and the change without the fire. You need the fire to bring about the change. You need the fire to have more anointed. You need the trials and tribulations to have the anointed. Some people around here think they can just shout and have no anointed. Some people think they can just shout and uh and, and can get in the work and can get in the worship. No, I don't work that way. No one can enter in with unclean hands. Hallelujah. No one can have the anointed without the fire. Hallelujah. And, and, and the only way to figure out if someone got the anointing, you got to try the spirit by the spirit. You got to see if it's of God. Hallelujah. You got to try the spirit. Hallelujah, Jesus. Something on the inside works on the outside. Some people have the suit. Hallelujah. Have the good dance, but it ain't in that. Hallelujah, Jesus. You got to see. Uh, you got to look at the lifestyle. Hallelujah, Jesus. Something on the inside is working on the outside. Something on the inside is working on the outside. It brings about a change in my life. Hallelujah. Did it bring about a change in your life? Hallelujah. Persecution made me stronger. Hallelujah. Fire made me stronger. Hallelujah. It gave me a deeper understanding of God. We say we love God, but we don't have an understanding of Christ. Hallelujah. Because if you did, something would change it on the inside. Something would change in your lifestyle. Something would change in your lifestyle. But are you so glad that God is on the inside? Are you so glad that he changed your life? Hallelujah. Are you so glad that you have an anointing? Hallelujah. Aren't you so glad that you have the glory on your life? Hallelujah. You can walk down the street. Hallelujah. You can go into the gym and work. Hallelujah. And people just point you out. Hallelujah. There's something different about you. Hallelujah. Something giving off in you. Hallelujah. Something warm. I feel it. Hallelujah. When you talk, I feel something different. Hallelujah. That's the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. They're going to know from your life. Hallelujah. They're going to know from how you dress. Hallelujah. But they're going to feel something on the inside. You're going to be able to minister. Hallelujah. You're going to be able to see signs and wonders. Hallelujah. Something on the inside is working on the outside. Jesus got to dwell on the inside. Hallelujah. Jesus got to dwell on the inside. Hallelujah. The Bible simply says if any man is born in Christ Jesus, he's now a new creature. We have all, we have people saying I'm uh, born in Christ. I'm a new creature. But nothing has changed. Hallelujah. We're living in a generation whew, where everybody is saying the name God and Jesus. But nobody is living a holy life. Hallelujah. Nobody's living a separated life. Hallelujah. Come from out from among them. Hallelujah. And be separated. Hallelujah. Touch no one clean thing. Hallelujah. Then I would hear from heaven. 
Hey, I will receive you, hallelujah. We gotta separate ourselves, hallelujah. There's got to be a difference. There's got to be a difference. There's got to be a change. There's got to be a change. There's got to be a change. There's got to be a difference. Hallelujah. 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 And this is another thing. How are you going to know if God is really in a person? Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. This is how you're going to know. Oh, hallelujah. This is how you're going to know. Thank you, Jesus. This is how you're going to know. Because when God deals with you. Oh, hallelujah. Because when God deals with you, your mentality switches. Back then, when you didn't have God, you were going through something. And you wouldn't change your life. You would go through something. And you wouldn't just complain. You would complain or complain, complain. You would say, why God, why me? You would go back to doing something worse. You turn to alcohol. You turn to sex. You turn to drugs. But this is how you know someone is of God. When you go through something, you count it all joy. Oh my God. You count it all joy. Because you realize if I'm going through something and the devil is fighting me the way he is, I know something is going to happen. I know I'm close to my miracle. I know I'm close to my blessing. I know God is about to do something because the enemy fighting me on every hand. He's trying to get me to change my mentality. He's trying to get in my mind. He's trying to get in my mind. He's trying to tell me, you should quit. You got to give up. It ain't gonna happen. You ain't anointed. But God, but God, let me do what I know on the inside. Everything's different. Your walk is different. Your talk is different. Your mentality is different. So we count it all joy. Think it not strange. The fire and trial that comes. Think it not strange. Think it not strange. They cannot say concerning the fire and trial which try you as though something strange happened to you. These things happen unto you, but rejoice in so much as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad and all exceedingly joy. That's the Bible. You gotta cut it on joy. Something in 
off. And I'm not gonna wait till the battle is over. I'm not gonna wait till the battle is over. I'm gonna shout now. I'm gonna shout now. I'm gonna shout now. Cause God is good. I know we got something in store. I feel it in my bones. Something on the inside. 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 I know God is doing something. But if you can just get in the praise, if you can just get in the overflow, God is gonna do something different. God is gonna do something different. I said, woman, this is the anointing. I'm getting ready to preach this weekend. This is the anointing you feel. It's on my life right now. It's on me heavy. It ain't for me. It's for the people of God that I've got to minister to. Because I know that something that's is going to happen. I know something miraculous is going to happen. And I don't want you to miss the move of God. I don't want to miss you. I want you to miss the new fresh anointing that's going to carry you to 2022. He's going to do something miraculous in your life. He's going to do something amazing in your life. He's going to change it all around. He's going to make it all new. He's going to make it all new. There's going to be no residue of your past. There's going to be no residue of the old. But it's going to be all new. Your thought process is going to change. The inside is going to change. That thing you've been wrestling with. That thing you've been wrestling with. It's got to go. It's got to go. It's got to go. It's got to go. Church and old has got to go. We gotta do this thing new. God is doing a new thing. God is doing a new thing. Are you glad? If you're glad, I'm gonna shout hallelujah.